Assalamualaikum and hi to everyone. My name is Amrul Azrai bin Yusof and today I would like to present my final year project regarding bearing fault detection and condition monitoring using vibration analysis. Before we get into complex terminologies, let's have an introduction first. So what is a bearing? A bearing is a machine element that will reduce the friction and make the rotation smooth. A wide variety of bearing designs exist to allow the demands of the application to be correctly met for the maximum efficiency, reliability, durability, and performance. It also acts as a support to maintain the correct position of the rotation shaft. But why is bearing fault detection important? Bearings are vulnerable due to support and always in the state of rotating while the machine works. It tends to wear out and sooner or later the machine will undergo full paralysis due to poor health of bearing. That's where fault detection for the bearing is needed which is to predict the health of the bearings whether in a state of healthy and poor to reduce the maintenance cost of the machine for a longer period of time and thus preventing the machine to go full paralysis which can lead to catastrophic failures. Next is vibration analysis. Vibration analysis is a process that monitors the levels and patterns of vibration within the bearing component, detects the slightest abnormal vibrations and be able to evaluate the overall condition of the bearing. The analysis will provide a more accurate data signal from the raw data signal of the bearings to tell which bearings has healthier condition than others. An example of vibration signal is either in time domain or frequency domain or time frequency domain. The problem statements that we faced was how to distinguish between a healthy and a faulty bearing and ways to detect them while our objectives are to extract the diagnostic features from raw vibration signals using fast Fourier transport analysis and to be able to predict when the bearing would fail. Now for this project, we use the MATLAB software for rendering and the data extraction. The flowchart shows that it starts with the setup which is to make sure that the declared variables were correct such as constants before proceeding to code. This is to ensure that no error occurred such as variable is not set or the data not exist in the database. Next is the solution. The simulation was set in the MATLAB because the environment was suitable for deep learning and familiar sets of machine language. Last is the results. After the data was simulated, the results will be collected and analyzed. In the MATLAB software, the data is loaded. Then, variables such as number of samples and sample frequency was declared to acquire a graph of bearing defect depths against time. As you can see, as the time increases, the, band, the depth defects increases exponentially. Next is to create a graph of healthy and faulty bearing. As we observe from the first graph, it is significant where the healthy and the faulty bearing conditions are located, which are the first data signal and the last data signal. So, true graphs can be created from data signals, hence the healthy and the faulty bearing signal graphs. However, when we look closely at the graphs, there are no significant difference between a healthy and a faulty bearing due to the noise of the signals. Hence, we continue the, with the data extraction using Fast Fourier Transform or FFT. 
To extract the raw data signals, features are extracted from each segment and will be used for health monitoring and prognostics. Typical features for bearing diagnostics and prognostics include time domain features like signal kurtosis or mean square. As for frequency domain features, it will likely to be peak frequency or peak value. Before selecting a feature to use, the vibration signal spectrogram was plotted. It can provide some guidance on which features to use based on signal patterns that indicates failure. A constant set needs to be declared as shown to create a spectrogram. The signal energies concentrated in each graph were in different range of frequencies. Therefore, representative features can be extracted and used for condition monitoring and prognostics. Mean peak frequency was extracted from the spectrogram as health indicators. From the equation, we can determine the mean peak frequency of each spectrogram. The healthy bearing vibration signals have a mean peak frequency around 650 Hz, while the mean peak frequency for faulty bearing shifts to above 2500 Hz. To combine both vibration signals, the data was extracted at the middle stage, where the defect depth was still not very large but starting to affect the vibration signals. However, the high frequency noise was spread all over the spectrogram. This was due to the mixed effect of both original vibration signals and the vibrations induced by small defects. The data was filtered to remove those high frequency noise in order to calculate the mean peak frequency accurately. Since the mean peak frequency successfully distinguished healthy bearing and faulty bearing, the mean peak frequency for each segment of the data can be calculated. Next, condition monitoring and prognostic was performed using a predefined threshold and dynamic model. To create a dynamic model, the first 200 mean peak frequency data was used to create an initial time series model. Then, once the 10 new values were available, the last 100 values were used to update the time series model. The time series model captured instantaneous trends and up the updated time series model will compute a 10 step ahead forecast. A threshold need to set when to stop the machine. A probability distribution graph was plotted from the statistical data to determine the threshold. Looking at the graph, a threshold for the mean peak frequency was set to 2000 Hz to distinguish a healthy bearing from the faulty bearing and to maximize the use of bearing. The plot showed that the initial data was a combination of level and noise. This is expected as Initially, the bearing was in healthy state and the mean peak frequency was not expected to change significantly. A second order state space model was identified using the first 200 data points to obtain the model in canonical form with specific sampling time. Because the initial estimated dynamic model has a low goodness of fit, it then be calculated by using normalized root mean square error or NRMSE where X true is the true value and the X pre is the predicted value. The estimation data is the combination of the constant level and noise given the NRMSE generated model close to zero. Thus, a residue correlation was plotted to validate the model. As the generated model was valid, a forecast MPF was identified and the standard deviation of the forecast values were computed.
the plot showed that the forecasted value of mean frequency were below the threshold. Then, as the new data comes in, the model parameters were updated and we estimated the forecasted value. Then, an alarm was created to check if the signal value exceeds the failure threshold. The second graph showed that it was estimated to hit failure threshold in 80 minutes from now. Then, the most recent time series models was examined. The goodness of fit increases from almost 0% to above 90%, thus the trend was captured correctly. Another method tested was Long Short Term Memory aka LSTM. LSTM is suitable for condition monitoring because it can store information for a long period of time. One of the quirks of LSTM was data training and the visualization of data accuracy for trained data or tested data. It is still in progress and was in consideration for future studies but due to limitation of equipments such as higher power graphic, graphic processing unit or GPU, so the progress was stalled. In conclusion, we were able to distinguish between a healthy bearing and a faulty bearing. Raw data extraction using fast Fourier transform analysis was successful and forecasting helps so that action can be taken before the actual failure happens. Thank you. Terima kasih. Arigato gozaimasu.